We bless the name of our God for allowing us to be here in this house once again, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We bless his name this morning because he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We bless his name this morning because it is God that is still keeping us. It is God that's still watching over us. It is God that is still providing for us and making a way for us out of no way. When the enemy tried to take us out, take us down, it is God that has been holding us. It is God that is still keeping us. So this morning we've come into the sanctuary to bless his name on this day. For those of you who are watching by Facebook Live this morning, we invite you to be a part of our service on this morning here in the sanctuary at Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. We're located at 1141 Campus Stella Road in the beautiful city of Norfolk, Virginia. The zip code is 23523. And we are just so grateful once again that on the second Sunday of the year that he's blessed us and allowed us to be here in this place. So while we're here in this place, wherever you are this morning, I pray that you would make that your sanctuary. Make that your place of worship on this day, uh, that as we've come to hear from the Lord on this day, that we can give his name glory, that we can give his name honor, that we can give his name praise that is rightfully due unto him. While you're here in the sanctuary, come on, stand on your feet this morning as we invite the presence of the Lord here in this place. Every head bowed, every heart pray. Our God and our Father, we are grateful again for how you've blessed us and how you've kept us. Thank you for providing this opportunity for us on this second Sunday morning of this year that we can come and worship you in spirit and in truth. So come Holy Spirit, come Heavenly Dove with all of your quickening power and breathe on these cold hearts of ours that we may do thy blessed will. Holy Spirit, lead us this morning in our worship. Come on and manifest yourself here in our presence on this day and that we may hear from you as you lead and guide us, help us to follow in your direction. Thank you for being our God, for allowing us to be your children. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and all believers shout amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. While you're still standing this morning, if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of 1 Peter in the New Testament. 1 Peter chapter 1, I'm going to begin reading at verse number 17 this morning. 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to begin at reading at verse number 17. Reading this morning from the NIV, the New International Version. If you have it, if you found the scripture, just say amen. If you're still trying to find it, just say hold on. Just go near, close to the back, go to the back, close to the back of your Bible. You'll find 1 Peter, 1 Peter, right after the book of James, right after the book of James. Peter says these words to the believers he says, since you call on a father who judges each person's works impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He has chosen, he was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, mm -hmm. through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fail, but the word of God endures forever. Amen. Amen. For the reading of God's words, you may take your seats. Praise be unto our God. Praise team this morning is going to lead us 
and opening selection. Come on, sing, everybody. He's our God. Our God is a healer. He's strong and mighty. We're talking about our God. He's like no other God. In the Bible, when they wanted to talk about the true and the living God, they said he's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He's the true and the living God. And that's the God that we serve on this day. And if he's God, then that means he can do things above and what we ask for or even think. That's because he's God. Yes, yes. And he wants to do great and mighty things. But the question this morning, will you allow him to do great and mighty things in your life? Well, it's prayer time now in the house. And while we've come to pray today, we've come to talk to the Lord, to tell him all about our troubles, and to ask him to intervene on our behalf on this morning. Deacon Shirley Strowman, if you would come this morning to the mic and 
She's going to pray. Pray for those who are here. Pray for those who are sick and shut in. Pray for those who just ask us as a church family to lift them up in prayer this morning. So while she's at the mic to pray this morning, I'm going to ask that you extend your hand toward her right now. Just extend your hand toward her right now. She's going to talk to the Lord on behalf of all of us this morning. And we're going to touch and agree with her this morning. That whatever she asks God for, that God's going to do for us on this day. Pray digging. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord, yes. to a brand new day. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe throughout this whole week, Lord. Mm. That we could come here and worship in spirit and in truth. Thank you for loving us, Lord, in all of, no matter what we yes. say or what we've done, mm. you still love us. Yeah, Lord. Father, please continue to comfort the bereaved families, Lord. Yes, God. Hold them close to you, Lord. Dry their tears and tell them, let them know that it's going to be all right after yes. a while. And Father God, please continue to bless our children, Lord. Yeah. Give them strength, Lord. Let them go to school to learn, Lord. Mm. And let the teachers have patience with them. Mm. And let the teachers bless yes. the teachers, Lord, because yes, they're God. going through things too. Yes. Father God, we love you. We need you. Please continue to touch the, and heal the sick and shut in, Lord, of this church. And on our prayer list, please touch each and every person. You know what they stand in need of, Lord, whether it's healing or finances, or just a little talk with you, Lord. Yes. Please continue to just be there for us. Lord, we love you. We yes. need you. You're the only true and living God. Yes, God. Let us learn to walk by faith and walk yes. by sight, not by sight. Yes, we love you. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Just sing a little bit more of that for me. Our God, come on, take them back there, Jalen. Need to hear just a little bit more of that this morning. Sing a little bit more of that. about our God this morning. Just our God. Yes. 
You see, when you talk about your God, you ought to talk about your God in a positive way. How mighty he is. How magnificent he is. How awesome he is. Because you want to let somebody all around you know that he's a God that's above all gods. And that there's nobody like your God. And nobody can do you like God can do you. Amen. Thank you, choir. God bless you this morning. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Praise God. Someone from our greeters ministry is going to come and welcome everybody this morning. Who's coming? Brother Marcus is coming this morning. He's going to welcome everybody on this morning. Bless God for Marcus this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I said, good morning, church. Good morning. Because if you're blessed this morning, then you, can, you should be able to shout this thing out. We just got finished singing this song, Our God is Greater. So if you've been blessed today, then it should not be a problem. Shout out, good morning. Good morning. There you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Say it like you mean it. But anyway, do we have any visitors here today? Please stand. Amen. 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 Don't, don't sit down yet. Don't sit down yet. I'm going to leave you with this thought for the day. For the song we just sing, Our God is Greater, God wants you well. Why does he want you well? For the things that's going on out here in this world today, and people are getting sick, dying, and no, nobody, and it's, things is un, out of control, God wants you well. God wants you well because there is a word out here for everybody. There is a word to be spread by everybody. And God does not want you in bondage, he does not want you in sickness, and he, and he wants you to be strong in your faith. That's the key thing, in your faith. So God wants you well. So everybody, be well and have a blessed day. And we're going to have further remarks from our own pastor, Bobby Bouse. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Marcus. Josh, stay here. Got three young men. Come on. This, this morning, three young men. Good to have you this morning. If you don't mind, just slide your mask down. Just tell us who you, give us your name and maybe where you're from this morning, if you don't mind. Come on, young man right here in front. All right, praise God. Thank you. Amen. All right. Amen. Come on, young man right there. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming to be with us this morning. Praise God for you. Young man in the back right there. Come on, tell who you are. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, young man, for coming to be with us here at Mount Lebanon. If this is your first time being here, we praise God for you. And we're just so delighted this morning that you've taken the time to come to be with us. We do realize that you could have gone anywhere that you wanted to go to worship on this morning, but you decided to come to Mount Lebanon this morning. So we say thank you, first of all, for coming to be with us today. And we pray that you will be inspired by the music. We pray that you'll be inspired by the word today um, and that you would go out carrying the love of Jesus in your heart everywhere that you go. God bless you and thank you for coming to Mount Lebanon Baptist Church on this day. Amen. Mount Lebanon, come on, give him a great hand. Give him a big hand for being here with us this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God for you. Just by words, a few of announcements this morning. I do want to say thank you so kindly for the members of our church who supported the home going of Sister Lucille Sawyer on Wednesday. And so we thank you so kindly for supporting uh, her home going celebration and keep the family in prayer. We do want to ask you that you pray for the Nemo family as Sister Shirley Nemo, um, nephew up in New Jersey, has passed. Uh, so please keep uh, her family in prayer. 
I want to ask the members of our church to try your best to stay as safe as possible. We do know that uh, the virus is still kicking up even more now, and so we want to be as safe as possible. So when we come in here, in this place, we're going to practice social distancing. We're going to keep our masks on because we still want to be safe everywhere that we go. And thank you for being so obedient when you have come into the sanctuary. I want to let the church know I, we were supposed to have church meeting on, on yesterday. We've canceled that. We do realize that a lot of things were going on. But we're going to have church meeting this Saturday at 10 a.m. It will be by Zoom. It will be by Zoom. The link will be sent out this week. You'll get that so you can sign on. Um, so you can be on for the Zoom meeting at 10 a.m. There are copies of the budget that we'll have back in the back if you want a copy of the budget so you can look, look over it so when we come to the meeting on Saturday, you don't have to worry about trying to look at every line item all, during that time. You already have it. You'll be able to go through it um, so you can get a copy of the budget if you so desire it for the meeting on this Saturday. You can still purchase a memorial block from the committee, if you want to put your loved one's name on that block right there, um, they'll be glad to assist you in that process. Brother, excuse me, Reverend Ross has asked that, you know, we had asked everybody in our church if you, we would help those who are homeless, that we would get jeans for the men. We're trying to help the men out who are homeless on the street, um, get jeans for them, also sweatshirts. But he's also asked that if we could get some underwears, maybe some thermal underwears, you know, for the men, get that for them. That would help keep them warm. He's been in contact with them uh, out on the street. So first of all, we thank God that we're not in the street. Hello, somebody, that we're not on the street, that God has blessed us. Amen. But we want to help. We want to help them. We do realize that many of them are transitioning, so we want to do our part to try to help make life better for them. On last week, I, I forgot, Reverend Ross reminded me after church <laughs> um, that I forgot, I said, Pastor, you didn't uh, announce about birthdays and anniversaries. So I forgot on last week, so I'm going to do it today. How about that? How about that? Anybody born in the month of January, please stand. If January was, is your birthday month. Come on, stand up. All right. All right. All right. All right. Digging, this is not Hollywood. This is not Hollywood. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That there are some of you we do know that already have had your birthday. Um, you had it on last week. And we just want to say to everybody who happened to celebrate a birthday in the month of January, happy birthday to you. And we pray God's blessings upon you and that you would have not just this birthday, but have many, many more birthdays after this one, and that God will continue to bless you with all the birthdays um, that he will have you to have. Enjoy your birthday. A whole lot of folks are not getting birthdays anymore, but you are blessed to be here today. Uh, you're going to have a birthday on this month. Hold on for a second since we only got two. Um, you got a birthday coming close, isn't it? When is it? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Amen. Amen. If you be tomorrow... All right, Sister Glenna, yours is? Last Sunday. Last Sunday. <laughs> and she should have hollered from the last day. <laughs> yeah, but happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Ronnie, do we have a little music this morning? Oh, Jalen got some music. You, you going to do a little happy birthday, Jalen? Oh, okay, come on. Come on, everybody. Go ahead, Jalen.
Amen, amen. May you have many, many more. Many, many more. Many, many more birthdays. Praise God. Amen, amen. See, Ronnie just pointing. No, we got live this morning, Pastor. <laughs> Don't have to play it over there. Anybody getting married in the month of January? If January is your anniversary month, I see one hand. Anybody else? I see two. Two? Okay, we've got two in the sanctuary this morning that are celebrating anniversaries. All right. Um, Deacon Carl, how many years are you celebrating this year? 38. 38 years. Ooh. All right, all right. Brother Maurice, how many years are you celebrating? How many? 51. Woo, praise God. All right. Mercy. But we want to say happy anniversary to you this morning, and we, we praise God for you and that you still still married and you're still together. In society nowadays, you know, a lot of marriages don't last that long. Some of them don't even get out of the out of the teens. But you've been blessed this morning for 38 years and 51 years. Praise God for you. And we do know it has to be the Lord that keeps us together. And so we want to say happy anniversary from Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. Pray that you have many, many more anniversaries and that you would still stay in love with each other until the end. Amen. God bless you. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Happy Amen. They got some more. <laughs> All right, happy anniversary to each of you. Amen. Amen. Prepare our hearts now for the word on this morning. Uh, we do realize that we need a word from the Lord on this day. Choir's now going to come and lift up their voice in song and then we would come back with the word on this morning. Everybody say sing choir.
is awesome. My God is awesome. Awesome because he protects me. Awesome because he keeps me. Awesome because he provides for me. He also delivers me. My God is awesome. Come on, bless God for the choir, for the praise team this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Brother Jalen is, and the drum are still new to us. They're still new to the choir, amen. They're trying to just get everything together. Y'all bear with them. It'll be all right. They're going to be all right. He's doing well. They're doing well. Amen, amen, amen. Bow your heads with me and let's get started this morning. Father, I stretch my hands unto thee, for no other help I know, for if you would withdraw yourself from me, or shall your servant go? God, I thank you for providing this place, this space, as well as this time, that I'm able to share your word to your people once again. So come and speak through these lips of clay once again that your will may be accomplished here in this place. We need you. We can't do without you. Let now the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my strength. You are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to go back to that scripture that we read from 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm just going to read just one verse, and I'll read the a clause of verse number 23. We're going to read verse 22, which is our theme for this year. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 22, reading from the NIV. Here's the words that uh, Peter says. Peter says to these believers, he says, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. And now the A clause of verse 23, it says, for you have been born again. Amen. Uh, I want to talk this morning just for a little while from the subject, standing on this foundation. Standing on this foundation. Well, I know, first of all, you're going to ask the question, what's this foundation, Pastor? This foundation is right here in verse number 23. It's a foundation of love. Because Peter says to them that now that you have obeyed the truth, he says now you ought to love each other and love one another deeply from the heart. The foundation that we stand on is love. What is love? Love is Jesus Christ. That's the foundation that we stand on. Well, this week we lost an icon in Hollywood by the name of Sidney Poitier. Many of us remember Sidney Poitier. One of his famous movies was Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? In the Heat of the Night, Lilies of the Field. Uh, Sidney Poitier was the first African American to win an Oscar for Best Actor. We remember him being on the screen and how he opened doors for many other African American actors. One of the things that I'm so fond of about Henry Fonda is that Henry Fonda says about his own life, he says his mother taught him from the beginning of time to say yes ma'am and no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. And when his father and his mother who taught him together that you ought to respect and love all people. He said that yes ma'am and no ma'am, yes sir and no sir had opened doors for him. Well, can I just drop a little dime right there real quickly for you? It'll open doors for all of us if we learn how to respect people as people respect us also. Well, his parents gave him a good foundation to stand on. And that foundation that he was standing on was a foundation of love, learning how to love everybody. Well, Jesus helps us with this because Jesus tells us when this Pharisee lawyer comes and asks him, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus tells him that the greatest commandment is that you you, you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. He said the second is like this, you love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus says that this commandment is that, that we ought to love. 
But, with, but the commandment that he gives us to love also is followed by a commitment because we need to be committed to love everybody. Love is more than just a feeling. You see, because true love comes from the heart. And I don't know about you this morning, but I don't need a whole lot of folks telling me that they love me, but don't show me that they love me. I, I need some folks when they say they love me, they show me that they love me. What, what, what do you mean, show me, Pastor? That, that when I'm down and I need somebody, I need you to show me that you love me. That when I'm broke and I need a little money, I need somebody to show me that you love me. When I'm hungry and I need something to eat, I need somebody to show me that they love me. Well, this morning, Peter tries to help uh, these, these believers right here that, that they must understand that God is on their side. That God is on their side because Peter says to them from, from his epistle right here, P Peter says that there are three things that God knows about you. He says, number one, he says God knows who you are. And number two, God knows where you are. And thirdly, he says God knows what you're going through. Well, where, where, where is that in the text this morning, Pastor? If you go back to verse number two, first of all, the Bible says, Peter says to them that God knows, where, God knows who you are. Right there in verse number two, it, it says that, that God had elected them according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. They were elected by God. God knew who they were. But then secondly, God knew where they were because it says in verse number one verse number one it, it said that that they were strangers scattered throughout Pontus Galatia Cappadocia Asia and Bethania God knew where they were in, in other words they were still on God's radar God had them on his GPS God knew their location they were not lost because God knew that they were scattered but then Peter says, thirdly, that God knows what they were going through. He, he knows what they were going through because in, in verse 6, it, it says, they are in heaviness through manifold temptation. The, the NIV says it like this, that, that they're suffering grief in all kinds of trials. God knew who they were. God knew where they were. And, and God knew what they were going through. Now, I, I, I want to tell you today that, that that's good news because the same thing according to them, the way God, about God, about them is the same for us. Because God knows who you are, God knows where you are, and, and God knows what we are, we are going through. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? Because if you go over to Psalms 139, in, in, in verse 1, the, the psalmist says, O Lord, thou hast searched me, and, and God know, and you know me. And then in verse 2, he says, you, you know my down-sitting and my uprising. In, in verse 3, he says, thy compasseth my path and, and my lying down. Verse 4, he says, and, and there is no word in my Tongue. Verse 5, he says, thou hast beset me behind and, be and before. Verse 7, he says, where shall I go from thy spirit? Verse 8, if I descend into heaven, thou art there. Verse 9, if I take the wings of the morning, you are there. Verse 10, even if thy hand shall lead me, thy right hand shall hold me. Verse 11, if, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be my light. Verse 12, yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as a day the darkness and the light are both alike to thee God says I know who you are I know where you are and I know what you are going through that's good news and that shouts me this morning John Hargrave it shouts me because I am somebody to God for God to know who I am and where I am and what I'm going through it shouts me this morning because I realize that God is always in my life everywhere where that I go. If I go down into hell, God knows where I am. If I take the wings of the morning and fly away, God knows where I am. And it shouts me because when God is with me, nobody can harm me. Amen. It's a good news this morning that he knows Maurice where I am. He knows who I am. 
He knows what I'm going through. Well, well, hold on for a second before I jump from that this morning because somebody this morning is going through some heavy burdens and you're feeling like that God doesn't know what you are going through. Can I give you some good news this morning that God knows what you are going through? And the best thing you can do this morning is hold on to God's unchanging hand because if God knows what you are going through, maybe God has you in what you are going through until you can learn something about what you're going through to be prepared to where he's trying to take you. He knows who I am. He knows where I am. He knows what we all are going through. Peter this morning, in this text this morning, says to these Believers, Peter says that, listen, now, now that God, know, you know all that and that God knows all this about you. Peter, in, in verse 22, he says, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. He says in the eighth clause of verse 23, he says, for you have been born again. What Peter really says right here in the text Peter says is that now that you have real love, now that the love that you have on the inside of you is sincere, that, that, that you are to love deeply, and, and you are to love from the heart, not from the lips, but from the heart. In, in other words, what he says is that, 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 that now that you have been purified, you now have real love. Can I, can I come and get somebody this morning? Because I, I, I think Mary J. Bly said it like this. Mary J. Blige says, I'm looking for some real love. Okay, y'all going to try that go for it. I'm looking for some real love. Someone to set my heart free. Real love. Can I tell you something? That God can set your heart free because God will give you real love. Because God will love you when nobody else loves you. Peter says, you've been purified. You have sincere love. Now, love e each other. In other words, what, what Peter said this morning is, is that, that, that you've got real love. Your love is not counterfeit. Do, 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 do you realize that, that, that bank tellers go through weeks of training every year just to be able to identify counterfeit money? Huh? Just to be able to identify counterfeit money, to know the counterfeit from the real stuff? Well, well, guess what? Folks around you want to know, are you real or are you counterfeit? You, you say you love God and you say you're a Christian. Why your face always balled up like that? You, you, you say you, you, you love God. Why, why is it every time I walk by you, you act like I'm a ghost? Huh? You, you, you say you, you, you really love God. Why, why is it when you see me with my head down and you got so much word in you that you don't at least give me a good word to try to help me out? Maybe you don't have real love. But Peter says, these boys right here, Peter says, they have now have, y'all got real love. Love, he says, I want you to love now from the heart. Well, well what, what kind of love is that loving from the heart? Jesus says in, in, in John 15 and 12, Jesus says, this is my commandment that you love each other as I have loved you. And then in verse 13, he says, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. That's what you call genuine, real love. And you can stand on, on that. Well, why is it that I can stand on it, Pastor? I, I can stand on it because when Jesus gives me love, I, I realize that it's pure love that he gives me and he gives it unconditional. In other words, he doesn't put a condition on his love that he gives us. And I, I, I believe that ought to shout somebody right there is that when somebody gives you real love and they don't ask anything in return for it, you, you know that's show sure enough love. Because most folks nowadays, when they give you something, they want to give you something with a condition tied to you. If you do this, I'm going to do this for you. But no, Jesus doesn't ask you that. He just gives you love with no condition on, on top of it. 
me, is there anybody here this morning that you have realized and witnessed the real love that Jesus gives you and you knew that you know from the bottom of your heart that you don't deserve the love at all, but you got the love not because of who you are, but because of who he is in your life. He gave you love when you didn't deserve love. But listen, hold on for a second, I'm going to get to my topic, because you can stand on this foundation. Well, what, 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 what do you mean, Pastor, you can stand on this foundation? How, how do you know I can stand on this foundation? Well, let me tell you, and I'll yell you away. Number one, you can stand on this foundation, because if you turn to Isaiah chapter 28, verse number 16, you will see the foundation that God set for us that we can stand on. Go, go there. You got your Bible? Go there. Don't turn right there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be right there. I'm going to stay right there. Isaiah 28, verse number 16. God said to Isaiah, he says, Behold, I lay in Zion for, for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Well, what do you mean, Jesus? What do you mean, God, that, that you got for us? What kind of foundation is this that you have for us? Well, first of all, he says in the text this morning from verse 16, he says, number one, that God has given us a proven stone. Everybody say proven for me. He's given us a proven stone. The text says right there, it's been tried. <laughs> it, it, it's, the stone has been tried. In other words, pressure has been put on the stone, and the stone have withstood the test of time. It's a tried stone. And you, everybody here know this morning, when, when you buy something, you want to be sure that it's tried. It, it ain't just something that somebody threw together, but they tried it before you bought it. God said, I have given you a stone, and the stone that I've given you is proven because it's been tried. I put pressure on it, and it stood the test of time. But then number two, he said, not only is it a proven stone, but he said, it's a precious stone. Everybody see that? It's a precious stone stone. Uh, it, it's been e elected. It's the chief cornerstone. Now anybody know that if you build a building or you build a house, there is a cornerstone. And, and the cornerstone is really what keeps everything together. All the weight right there is laid there by the cornerstone, and the cornerstone holds things together. And so God says, I'm giving you a proven stone. It's a precious stone because it's the chief cornerstone, and it's holding everything together. As a matter of fact, if you don't believe me, you ought to go right here in 1 Peter. If you slide down to chapter 2, verse 16, Peter says, again, just like Isaiah says, he says, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believes on him shall not be conformed. In other words, what Peter says for us right here, just like Isaiah says, this stone right here is proven, but it's also a precious stone because I have elected it and I've given it to you for you to be able to stand on. But then lastly, he says not only is it a proven stone, a precious stone, but it's a powerful stone. Stay with me, I'm almost done. It's a powerful stone because the text in verse 16 says it's a sure foundation. It's a sure foundation. An assured foundation is something that I know that, that I don't have to worry about. Uh, you see, when, when, when I step out on, on the floor, I, I want to be sure that the floor can hold me. I want to be sure that somebody has put some pressure on it, Mr. Jonah, before I step out on it, because I want to be sure that when I step out on it, I don't have to be out there trying to wiggle like I'm afraid whether it's going to give away. No, when I step on it, I want to be sure that it's a sure foundation. Well, as I get ready to go this morning, I, I want to tell somebody that when you have the love of God, the love of God runs deep. 
And because the love of God runs so deep, you can stand on the love of God. Because the love of God has already passed the test of time. It's a sure foundation that you can stand on this morning. And I can't believe I'm closing so early this morning. I'm going to make myself happy this morning because I'm closing early this morning. But I want to tell somebody as I get ready to close this morning. The stone that you can stand on this morning is a proven stone. The stone that you can stand on this morning is a precious stone. The stone that you can stand on this morning is a powerful stone because the stone has stood the test of time. Who is that stone, pastor? That stone is Jesus, the lily of the valley. Jesus, the bright and the morning star. That's who the stone is and the stone runs deep. Well, let me tell somebody as I go to my seat this morning, I, I almost feel embarrassed to use this story this morning in my text this morning because I do realize that I want something that's sure. I want something that goes deep. Well, the story is about the three little pigs. There were three little pigs. Y'all know the story, don't you? One, two of them built their house quickly, but then one of them took the time to build a house he dug down deep in the ground. And when the big bad wolf came by, the big bad wolf said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. And he blew on the first house and he blew the house down. He came to the second little pig's house and he said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. And he blew the house down. But when he came to the third little pig's house, the big bad wolf said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow the house down. Well, he blew. And he blew. He blew. And he blew. He blew. And he blew, but he couldn't blow the house down. And the reason he couldn't blow the house down was because the pig had dug down deep in the ground to build his house. My question for you this morning is how deep have you dug down this morning? How deep is the love that you have of Jesus in your heart? How deep is the power of Jesus working in your life? How deep is your faith this morning that you're holding on to? Will it blow away when the winds blow? Will it wash away when the storms come? Will it disappear when strong winds blow? I stopped by to tell somebody this morning on my way to heaven that when you stand on the foundation of Jesus, you can stand. Storm clouds may rise. Strong winds may blow. But they won't blow you down. You will be able to stand because you're standing on a firm foundation. Is there anybody here this morning want to tell somebody the winds have been blowing in my life, but it ain't blowed me away. Anybody want to tell somebody this morning, I should have been gone a long time ago, but I was on a foundation called Jesus. I wasn't holding myself. He was holding me, and I was holding on to him because I was standing on him. Is there anybody here this morning want to be a witness to tell somebody, if you stand on the solid rock, everything will be all right. That's why the hymn now just said, on Christ the solid rock I stand. And all of the ground, ain't nothing but seeking sand. Listen, this morning I'm done. You got a sure foundation that you can stand on this morning. And it is the foundation of Jesus, which is the foundation of love. Now let me ask you a question before I go. As a songwriter said, how deep is your love? Hmm? How deep is your love this morning? Is your love so deep? Ah, that when the enemy comes, the enemy can't harm you because your love is just that deep? Or is your love shallow this morning because your love is based on 
you and not on Christ. But when you got it on Christ, it'll stand the test of time. Come on, stand up, stand up, come on. Come on, let's go home this morning. I'm going to stay right here for the rest of the month because we got to get this love thing straight. That's our theme this year, family impact. And we impact our families with love. And when we do that, guess what? You'll see a change in the family. See, all of us got some family members that feel like they're not loved. And they need to know that not only does God love them, but do you love them? See, they can't see God, but they can see you. So what you got to do is you got to show them God in you. So when you talk about love, listen, you got to talk about God. Because Jesus is love. I want you to have a deep love this year. An unabiding, unabiding love. An abiding love for Christ this year. That it shows everywhere that you go. You can't hide it. It ain't counterfeit. It's genuine. Every day I get up, I'm smiling. Why? Because it ain't counterfeit. <laughs> it's real. And I want to share it with you. There may be somebody here this morning. You've come to this church. You're not saved. You've never given the Lord your life. You don't feel like the Lord loves you. I want to give you some good news. God loves you. I don't care how deep you fall and God loves you. If God is still keeping you, God loves you. He has a purpose for you. And because he loves you, he wants you to give him your heart today. So is there anybody here that's need the love of Christ today? You want to give your life to him. Even if you're watching by Facebook this morning, you want to give your life to him this morning. All you have to do is bow your heads and just repeat these words. Just say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I desire to be saved. Forgive me of my sins. Come and live in my heart. I'm sorry I've sinned. But I believe in you, God. And I believe in your son, Jesus. That he lived, that he died, he was buried. But you raised him up on the third day morning with all power in his hands. come in my life. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved now. If you meant it, you're saved. You can go home with a new love today. The love of Christ abiding in you today. Well, if you're already saved and you, you want to join the church, the doors are open this morning. If you want to come and join this church, you can come this morning and join. We love to help you to fall in love with him even deeper. Because that's what Peter says. Peter says, now that you know the truth, have a deeper love for Christ. A love that's from the heart. A love that's from the heart. See, when God wins your heart, God's got you. He's got you. And that's what he wants. He wants your heart. God bless each of you, all you standing this morning. Thank you for coming. For those of you watching by Facebook, thank you for watching this morning. I pray that the word bless you this morning. I pray that you have a deep abiding love for Christ. That you will be able to let everybody know it's a genuine love that I have. It ain't phony. I ain't got to try to make it up. I ain't trying to make a smile up. No, it's real. It's real. I can't help but love you. <laughs> because he loves me. He loves me. Those who are watching by Facebook, if you want to give to this house, you can give. You can mail it to the church, 1141 Campostella Road, North of Virginia, zip 23523. You can bring it by the church. Or you can use your smartphone. Well, don't have to be smart. Just your phone. As long as you can text. Just go to, just text 73256. In the comments, MLBC, hit send. It'll prompt you to give right there. 73256. MLBC, hit send. It'll prompt you there. 
or you can go to the website, mlbcnorfolk.com. Go to the find resources. You can go right there. You can give there. Amen. For those of you in the sanctuary, as we exit this morning, there'll be a basket on both sides that you can give on the way out on this morning. Amen. Before we leave this morning, before we leave as we get ready to give this morning, is there anybody here that wants to give to the Lord, but you don't have anything to give today? Did anybody come to church today? You want to give, you want to give, but you don't have anything to give. Just raise your hand. If that's you, don't be ashamed. Just raise your hand. All right, I see one hand. You don't have anything to give. Don't have anything to give. Amen. Amen. Come here, digging. Anybody else want to give to him? Anybody else want to give to him? Help him this morning. God bless you, son. We're going to bless you, young man. We're going to bless you, young man. Hang on. Anybody else want to give to him? Just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. If you want to give to him, she's going to come. Uh, come here, usher. I need another usher. Come here, Kayla. Kayla, you can walk fast. Come here, baby. Come on, Kayla. Kayla, walk fast for me, baby. Walk fast for me, Kayla. Kayla, walk fast for me, baby. Right there. Go to him. I got some right here. I got some right there. Okay. Keep your hands up if you want to give to the young man back there. See those hands right there, Kayla? See those hands? Amen. 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 Anybody else? So the Sheila's over there on that side, Sharon. Sheila's, so Sheila's by you. Anybody else want to give to? Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Come here, young man. Come here. Come here. Come on, this way. That's right. Come this way. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come right here for me. So they want us. Come right here. Come right here. Not trying to embarrass you. Not trying to embarrass you. I, I wouldn't dare want to do that. I believe in blessing people. Everything they have, we're going to give it to you this morning. You showed up at the right place at the right time. Now, what's your name again? Lamonte. Damonte. Okay. Now, what they're going to give you this morning is yours. It's up to you what you do with it. Okay? It's up to you what you do with it. But here's what I suggest you do. Give God something. You understand me? Always bless God first. When you put God first in your life, God's going to look out for you. God will not be second in anybody's life. You make him first. That's why those of us who are here, we are tithers. We give first to the Lord 10% of what we have. And God has to do what God said to do. Because God said, if you bring the tithe to the storehouse and prove me, he said, I'll open up windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will have not have room enough to receive. So she's got money. She's got everything right there. There we go. It's yours. It's yours. All right? It's yours. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. If, if your head bow, you can stay right there. You can stay there, son. You can stay there, sir. You can stay right there. We're going to get ready to leave. We're going to dismiss. On the baskets on the side that you can give on the way out. If your head bowed. Father, we thank you now for the manifestation of your spirit here in this place. Continue to move in our lives. Continue to let our love grow deeper in you, God. God, we didn't come for performance today. God, we came to see the manifestation of your movement here in this house. Don't let us go back home the way we came, but let us go back home with joy in our hearts. 
rejoicing of the Savior, who is Jesus the Christ. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling, who's able to present you faultless before his throne with exceedingly glad joy, to the only wise God, be dominion, power, majesty, now and henceforth and forevermore. And all the people said amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace. Go in peace. Go in peace.